with every tree that we push down, I get a little stab of worry. Is this the one that's going to damage our running gear? Are we going to get stuck out here? This drive isn't just hard on the body, it's hard on the nerves. And eventually, it all starts to get a bit too much. It's hard going. Hard going, I've had a gut full of it. It just doesn't seem to end. I would have thought it'd just open up, but it doesn't. It's just hard. Escott has an interesting place in local history. The place was abandoned soon after it was set up because of the deadly Gulf Plague. The town of Carnarvon that we visited on Swears Island housed many of the survivors, and Escott got back up and running soon after the threat had passed. It's fair to say that today's cattle mustering techniques are a bit different to the old days. Helicopters are common on large outback properties like this. And we're in luck today because I've been given the opportunity to go up into the air for a bit of a scout around. If we can find the plane wreck from the air, I can confirm the exact GPS coordinates and survey the land for creek crossings and possible vehicle routes. Our pilot today is Red Man. He's seen the wreck once from above, which is good because apparently it's hard to find. How you going, mate? Good, there you go. Good, good. Jason? Jason? Oh. Red Man now, are you? Pleased to meet you. Yeah. Apparently you know where it is. Oh, well, yeah, we'll see how we go. Get the maps out. No, well, I've got a bit of a map. Yep, yep. Of the area. Yeah, well. Where do you reckon it might be? I don't know, mate. We'll take this route here, I'd say. Uh, straight up through this one here. This yeah. the fence line. A couple of sandy creeks on the way. Should be right. What are you, you? You're busy today or something? You reckon you uh, could? Yeah, we'll take you for a quick spin and see how we go. Yeah. Yep. Oh, mate, that'd be awesome, mate. That'd be great. No worries. No, that'd be good. All right. Well, obviously we can't get you in, mate. So I'll stay here, buddy. I'm going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, All right. Good. All right, mate. Good luck with that. <laughs> okay. This is great. As we take off towards our destination, I'm feeling a rush of optimism. With the advantage of an eagle eye view, we might be able to find our way out to the site. I'm sure Simon's feeling the same excitement and enthusiasm on the ground. Cheeky bugger, gets all the good jobs. I'll just stay here and look after the camp, eh? You just go for a nice little helicopter flight. As we track out, I wonder what the sky here was like 70 years earlier. In 1942, a B-24 bomber named Little Eva left Iron Range on Cape York with 10 crew members on board. Flying with four other B-24s, she successfully bombed a Japanese troop convoy in New Guinea. But on returning, encountered a huge thunderstorm at night and lost all her instruments and radio contact with her squadron. After passing through the bad weather, the pilot dropped down to ground level where the crew dropped flares in an attempt to spot any landmarks in the pitch blackness. Hopelessly lost and running on fumes, the crew was ordered to jump. On its last remaining fuel, the plane climbed to 9,000 feet where seven men were able to parachute into the dark. One became trapped in the tail fin and remained there as Little Eva ploughed into the ground, with three others also still on board. The six parachuting survivors who saw the fireball became separated into two groups. Two men headed east, where they were soon rescued. The other four headed northwest on what became an epic five-month journey of bush survival. We'll retrace their steps later in the series, but first, we need to find the crash site where it all started. It's so helpful to see all these water crossings from the air. Mate, 
I wish I had one of these all the time. Holy smokes, Redman is the first pilot I've flown with that is apparently scared of heights. At least this makes croc spotting fun. There's one. Look at him go. Should have brought the rod, you can see the barra. Looks like this fence line is as far as the cars will be able to go. But there's still another 15 kilometres to the crash site. We're keeping our eyes peeled. Even with a rough idea where it is, it's hard to spot the wreckage among the thick vegetation. Eventually we see it. There she is, little Eva, laid to rest in this lonely part of the world with four of her crew. Double check the GPS coordinates so we can find her again from the ground. We don't have a lot of fuel, so Redman takes us back to the station where we'll start our trek. See you soon, little Eva. We've left the crash site of the World War II bomber, Little Eva, and we're following Moonlight Creek to the coast. This is the route that four of the surviving crew took, hoping to reach Darwin. While they struggled with the harsh terrain, the other two survivors had made it to Escott Station, our home base. They raised the alarm and a search for Little Eva began. Police and Aboriginal trackers set out with pack horses, but it took over a month just to find the plane. They buried the four dead airmen and mark the graves with their air tanks. The Aboriginal trackers noticed four sets of prints heading away from the site and set out in search for the other survivors, but couldn't find them. It's not hard to see why. Look at this landscape. It's vast, remote and difficult to travel through, with dozens of tough creek crossings. Then there's the wildlife. Check it out. It's got to be at least a five metre salty. If we freeze it, you can see that's just his rear legs and tail going under. Imagine being lost out here for five months in the wet season with no supplies. Soon, we're back at the station. That was absolutely gold. That makes our job so much easier when you can see it from the air. There was pigs, there was all sorts, but we actually got to hover over the top of the aircraft and it's going to be tough going, but I reckon we can do it. The country, you know, there's going to be some hard creek crossings and stuff like that. But other than that, the, the plane is still intact and I can't wait to get to get out there in the buggies and the four wheel drives see what it looks like from the ground. Seeing the plane from the air has made it more real and I'm ready to hit the track. There you go, copy there, Jason. Yeah, go ahead, mate. So uh, you got it sorted where we're going after your uh, nice fancy little early morning joy flight, mate? It's going to be good, mate. I reckon it's going to be awesome. You're going to enjoy yourself because I know I did from the air. Yeah, I'm glad you had a good time. My stars stayed at camp and packed everything up, as usual. Uh, yeah, no, fair enough, mate. You have a chat to the boss. He might let you have a go. All right. That run in the helicopter this morning, that was, that was, that was an experience, that was. And you, it, it really opens up this country and you can see what's going on and it, it almost takes the hard work out of it. But having said that, it is going to be really tough going in with the four-wheel drives and then the buggies. And it's going to be a real adventure, a real off the beaten track. And I, I was quite impressed with how much of the plane is still there. You really, you really have to sort of think, think hard because we are visiting a grave site and there are four men, four airmen that are, that are uh, buried there. And you know, it's, it's these four men that never got to go home to their families. Um, you know, I sort of, I sort of think about that a little bit. It's one thing. It's one thing to be 
to be killed in, in action, it's another thing, you know, not to be able to, for your loved ones to have you come home at all. It's all about respect. I had a lot of, I have a lot of respect for the men that, that died there and I have a lot of respect for the men that survived, survived the ordeal. Well, Simon, this looks like the first creek crossing, mate. Miles, have a quick look, eh? Well, did you get your feet wet? Yeah, it's all hard bottom, mate. Are there any geckos in here? Nah, mate. Can't see any big, big lizard prints. Oh, the first creek crossing of the trip, mate. You got to do it. I don't think it's going to be that bad. It's a usual story, isn't it? I don't think it's going to be that bad, and it's like you could have drove your mum's car through. No worries, mate. Just tromp it through. From there, it's straight into our next obstacle. It's slippery in there, buddy. Yuck. That looks horrible. You need a car wash after coming out of there. Well done, mate. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a hard bottom on it. Yeah, I reckon I should try another way around with this trailer on. Yeah, mate, there's a truckload of trees there. You, unless we want to be chopping trees for half a day, I'm sure a bit of mud won't hurt you, eh? Just slip through it, mate. You'll be right. It's got a hard bottom. All right, going in. Off of you, or do you want to snatch me out? Uh, it's probably easy just to winch off. I'd, I'd come up on top here and winch off me. Quick little winch, and we'll have him out of the bog. How come you didn't make it through, mate? I had a signal to choose redline. <laughs> oh, redline master. Do you see that big thing hanging off the back of mine with the, the buggies on it? What thing? That big dual axle, big steel thing. Yeah, all the gear on it. 200 litres of fuel on the front. Yeah, what about it? Might have had something to do with it. He always wants me to get him out of the fog. You ready, mate? Yeah, we're good to go, mate. All right. Bring her on, hook her on. Yeah, mate, just take your front lockers off, eh? You don't want that load while you're winching. That extra load on the winch, well, not really the winch, but your front lockers. They don't need to be on while you're winching, and that's that's where you're going to snap something if you do. So remember, get those lockers off because they are tough and they snap they snap the axles. That's coming out easy, eh? Well done, about easy. We push on towards the end of the fence line and the untamed scrub that stands between us and our goal. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by the new product from Camp Boss 4x4. Now it's called the Nudie Boss Shower Tent and it's designed to be convenient and easy to pack up and set up and have a private area where you can get dressed, changed, have a shower, go to the toilet, whatever you want to do. It's awesome, it's easy, check this out. How cool is that? Simple as that, guys. 
So inside, if you have a quick look, you'll notice there is, there's a couple of uh, pouches here to store some stuff, your shower gel or whatever. Up here, have a look at this. So that's where the shower head will come through. Comes with a light. Have a look here. So the switching of the light, we've got white and orange. And this is pretty cool as well. I can put the roof in. A couple of Velcro clips. And I've got a private place where I can either go to the toilet, I can do have a shower, all those sorts of things. There she is, guys, the nudie boss. Now, if you get a chance, go on to Camp Boss 4x4 Shop Online or check out your local Camp Boss 4x4 dealer. Anyway, back to the adventure. We're on our way to find a World War II plane wreck. And it's slow going. With sand flats and water crossings in our way. We're travelling parallel with the coastline. So it's creek after sandy creek. And it's only a matter of time before this happens. Sam's pulled me up. We'll be rid of these toys. I don't think we'll be able to let in the area at this stage. It's going to get me out, but it might help on the next one. Luckily, we've got all the recovery gear we need to get ourselves out of this spot. Keep going, keep it going. Still got forward movement, we're all good. Just hold it there, I'll, I'll go further forward and give you some more rope. Unhook me, eh? Tonight when he's not looking, I'm going to hook that trailer on the back of this thing. Then we'll see if it gets pulled. Cheeky little bugger. No, he was moving. You're good now. Poor old mate. He's feeling the pressure of having to tow these buggies around all the time. But he's doing a great job. Good on him. Once again, we're free. Just keep going a little bit. Stop there, stop there. Yep. There you go. That's more like it. Seems like we're either driving through water or stopping to look at it. At least this little water hole has some interesting wildlife. Looks like a postcard. There you go. Send that home to Grandma. Simon, Simon, you on channel, mate? Yeah, you got a copy, Jase. Yeah, mate, uh, I'm in a big hole, mate. I um, tried to get around a bit of a bog hole up on the corner and I've just slipped straight into a big, festered mud pit. Ain't no time. I think we'll just drive on by. What were you thinking? We'll see you later, mate. We're just gonna keep going. How did you just get past? I stayed where the ground was hard, mate. I was watching where I was going instead of sitting back with the air conditioning on, probably playing a few toot tunes in that fancy carrier. No, nah, I was watching what I was doing. Well, we finished getting bumped for the day. One more, hopefully no more. Are you out of the pit of death yet? Oh, that didn't feel real good at all. That's ugly. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, well, let's keep going. Sorry about that, mate. Do you want me to get first? No, I'm still on. <laughs> After a long run, we make camp. It's been a gruelling day, and we're having car problems. Yeah. Well, we've made camp, that's a start. We've got to where we wanted to get to with a few dramas, but it wasn't too bad. But my uh, battery warning lights just come on, which means I think that my alternator isn't charging. And that's what I'll, I'll have a check of that. It might be a few, something simple. Could be something simple, but I think it was because of that, that uh, mud and, and crap that we were splashing through today. Don't know, but we'll check it out. I, 
There's not a lot I could do if it is the alternator. Not exactly going to pull it apart out here. But I've got solar panels and stuff like that to keep everything, all the batteries charged up, so we won't go. Won't be too bad. I hope. For now, we'd better get some rest because it's still a long way to go before we get to Little Eva. With the sun up, we're on the move. And on our way to find Little Eva, the World War II bomber that crashed out here 70 years ago, spawning one of the most incredible stories of bush survival in our history. After we find the plane, we'll be following the path that the survivors took as they struggled to stay alive out here for five long months. For now, we're struggling just to get up these embankments. This thing's just attractive, mate. <laughs> we should be, uh, according to the map, Simon, I think we should be coming up on that, uh, that river here, mate. We've run out of track. So most of it now is just, we just got to weed through the bush. But when we're up in the helicopter, that was the obstacle, mate. So we'll see what the riverbank looks like, eh? We'll see if we can get there. Look plans there. Yeah, it looks like the river just here, mate. Just be careful. I'm going to got to get too close to this riverbank. It could be a high one. Just hit it, mate. Starsky and Stutch style. Oh, I reckon I'll get down there. <laughs> That bank down there, mate. Look at it. It's yeah. high all the way down there as well. Yep. When you're up in the chopper, there's no road from here anyway. No, even no, there's we, no road. Even if we do get over there. It's all cross country now, mate. All cross country, so. Buggy time. I think it's buggy time. So we've come as far as we can, and I knew that river was going to stop us. But that's all right, that's why we got the buggies. And that's why we persisted in dragging that trailer all the way out, getting it bogged a couple of times. But now this is where it pays off. Unload the buggies and with GPS and the maps and all the information that I gathered from the helicopter, 15 kilometers we got to travel through the thick scrub to get to this wreck. It's gonna be an adventure. Oh, that should be the last of it. So you really got to think about what we're going to be doing out there and what scenario is going to happen. And I think the biggest thing is going to be puncture tyres. So puncture tyres are going to be a real problem. So I've got a repair kit. I've got a compressor. I've got some tyre levers. I've got one spare carcass. So if we can't plug the tyre with the puncture kit or repair kit, we have to change the whole tyre. And also got something to get the tyres off, which is really simple and easy. A little impact gun there, and that'll do the job. Now in my bag, I make sure I carry a bit of food, water, radio communication, satellite phone, and of course, GPS. But there's some real good detailed maps there. And I've got the GPS location of the exact aircraft position. All right, so with everything in hand, it's just a matter of uh, fueling up and getting the hell out of here. So it's going to be ATVs from now on. We have about 12 hours to get to the wreck and back. OK, so it's now about 11 hours to get to the wreck and back. These things are just so much fun. You can't blame us for having a bit of a muck around before we set off. But that sense of fun soon gets left behind as we realise how difficult this part of the trip is going to be. I thought the country looked more open by Chopper, but the vegetation here is tight. And stake and tyres is only a matter of time. This terrain is unforgiving. The 1943 search party lost two good horses out here. One to a snake, and the other was impaled on a tree. More recent expeditions to the site were also turned around due to hard going. I 
think I'm starting to better understand the hardship those men faced out here. A bit hardcore, mate. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit uh, thick. The scrub through here, isn't it? Do you want like this all the way? Like a highway? A horse trail. Follow that power farmer. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Leads right the way to here. If you have a look on the GPS, that's how far we've gone. That's how far we got to get. No, so we're only on this little side creek, the main creek's over yeah, a bit, yeah. main creek's over that way further. So we can follow this down, hopefully, to the main creek. Yeah. It's, it's been a lot thicker, the bush is a lot thicker than I expected, and we have been pushing hard through here, but if we can get over to this, this larger river and we get across there, it starts to open up, and hopefully the bush will start to spread out and give us some room to move a bit, because at the moment we're only a quarter of the way there. And we're, we're the second vehicle, second party of vehicles ever to come into this area. And the last team, they had one heck of a time, but they come in from a dif different direction. So we're coming in from a new direction. With every tree that we push down, I get a little stab of worry. Is this the one that's going to damage our running gear? Are we gonna get stuck out here? This drive isn't just hard on the body, it's hard on the nerves. And eventually, it all starts to get a bit too much. It's hard going. Hard going, I've had a gut full of it. It just doesn't seem to end. I would have thought it'd just open up, but it doesn't. It's just hard. push on, and eventually, the inevitable happens. Something goes bang. We're in the shit now, mate. Tell me about it. You just broke the CV joint. Yeah, well, from hitting those trees, isn't it? Yeah. This bush is just thick. It's just killing us. Is a stick jammed in there, maybe? Yeah. Hit one of those stumps or something with one rear wheel. That's going to be absolutely monsterated by the time we get back. If it makes it back. We've got nothing to pull that out, have we? That drive shaft? We've got enough tools to pull that drive shaft off or not? Uh, we might have. That's basically what we need to do. Need to pull the drive shaft off? Off that wheel, yeah. All right. Oh. Well, any drive shaft to the rear end to do. About 100 yards back, but could the buggy's struggling through this thick stuff. The quad bike can go twice as fast, but the buggy's just struggling through it, and I hit something pretty hard with the rear wheel here, and the poor old drive shaft just copped it. I'd say a stick's has come, a big stick or something's come in there and just smashed it, and now the CV joint's busted. I don't know what we're going to do. We've got some tools, but... This is one of our better breakdown points. Oh, this, this is not good at all. It's not good here. Well, I'm thinking this has put pay to our little adventure to the, the plane wreck. Pretty much a given we're not going to be making that today. We're not going to be making that at all. It's pushing way thicker than we thought. And this has really put the, the dampener on us. I hate to say it, but we might be in some serious trouble now. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by the Premium Adventure Recovery System from Campos 4x4. Now, this is an awesome little kit. Now, I put this kit together so that you've got all the little things that you need when you're out on an adventure and you get yourself bogged and you're looking for recovery. So, if you get a chance, check it out. 
Campos 4x4 shop online or get down to your local Campos dealer and they'll have plenty of these in stock. Otherwise, mate, stop listening to me Babylon and get on with your adventure. After a mishap in the bush, Simon and I are planning our next move. I'll go and do a recce info on the creek and have a look at the creek, see if it's how drivable it is, and we might try and head back that way. What do you think? At the moment, all I can feel in there is like it's being, the boot's being punctured. But the, the actual CV joint itself is still intact. Could it be that lucky? Yeah, well, it feels like it's copped a puncture. Doesn't look right. And usually, for that to happen like that, it's broken, in my experience. Is that where you reckon where the noise is coming from? It might not be broken, it might be just a boot. Oh, let me drive it. There you go. Stop, stop, stop. Have a look. Maybe it is just a boot, mate. I think we probably got a bit excited there and, you know. It's torn the boot, but it doesn't appear that the CV's broken, does it? No. Mm. It's a lot tougher than we expected. But I'm... Uh, I'm gonna make a decision that we turn around. What do you reckon? I'd like us to be defeated, but it's definitely looking a bit too hard. <laughs> oh, look. We're starting to wreck you, and if we break down down here, out here, well, then what? Oh, I don't know about you, but that That's gonna busted dirty, CV it? joint. It's gonna get dead in it now. Thinking busted CV joint, that just made me sick in the guts. Mm. We can maybe tow that out, but there's no way towing that out. Is that tyre going flat on the quad bike? The rear one? Yep. Uh, Looks like we got a flat too. <laughs> uh, okay. Yep, there she is. That'll do it, dear. That'll do it, all right. Pair of flies here, we'll get that out. Flies. Annoying little buggies. I think it's even going to be hard work just getting back. Just I guarantee know. it's going to be hard work getting back. I think even if we went to the plane, we'd, we'd be midnight by the time we got back, and I don't really want to run through this country in the middle of the night. The one thing you got to think of is, is those guys that crash landed in that aeroplane, and this is the country that they walked out of. Now that is hardcore. We're on quad bikes and we're doing it soft compared to those boys. We discover on our way back we can't use our outward bound track. The way we push the vegetation over will stake our tyres because the branches are all laying towards us. So we have to push down a new track and that means more risk of breaking something else. It's a constant battle. This is the return. There's 200 metres between us and the track. And it's like, I can't even see what the hell I'm supposed to drive through. It's just dense mass. It's just bloody painful. We finally get back to the fence line after a long and stressful day. For us, little Eva will remain in the distance. But now we'll join the list of those that got turned around by this unforgiving country. But one day, we'll return for another crack at it. Introducing the home of Australian adventure, Unleashed TV. A growing library of content featuring the best of four-wheel driving, <laughs> fishing, touring, rebuilds, bush cooking, and whatever you call this. Hope the airbags take up. Stream entire seasons of the hit TV show All for Adventure. Get me out of here, 
boys, water's coming in. Unleashed. Oh, that's tight. And more original series from Jason and the team. In this mini series, we're going to be exploring some of the most remote coastlines. Plus, get fresh new content exclusive to Unleashed TV subscribers. Snappers, mate, this is all going on down here. You it? can stream it all for just $9.99 per month. Yeah! That's why Unleashed TV is the home of Australian adventure.